praise God for your life. Okay, so um, now we're going to have our interview time. So I've already introduced Dr. Andrew. And um, I don't think I really need to introduce Dr. Mega too much because um, Pastor Lam has done that. But I just want to add that um, this book echoes from Borneo, although it looks like Dr. Mega's story, but it is very much, in fact, God's story in his life. As he looks back over half a century, there is a pattern of God's love, faithfulness, and guidance. And for that, I'm really um, honored that we could work on this book together. So as we have this interview, um, I just want to encourage all of you here to think of questions that um, don't post it yet in the chat, but think of questions that we can ask. Not everything will be answered, but um, I will let you know afterwards to post your questions. So after this interview for about 10, 15 minutes, we will have a Q&A time. So um, Dr. Mega, we would like to finally hear from you. Could you share with us, yes, what prompted you to write this book? Um, to unmute yourself first. Uh, Dr. Mega, uh, you need to press unmute. Um, okay. okay. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Ah, that's un unmute. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. We I have unmuted. To, yeah, we want to see your face also, Dr. Mega. <laughs> oh. No, no, no. no. Oh, okay. Me too. There, 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 there. Okay. Okay. Sorry, sorry, I pressed the wrong button. Well, I think uh, um, the credit should go to my wife because she has been uh, reminding me to write the story for a very long time. So I think you need to have a wife like her to keep you sort of on your toes, you know, <laughs> to write. Secondly, many years ago, there was a pastor, Pastor Paul Ang. I don't know whether you know him. He came and prayed for a group of us and he said uh, he wanted to pray for uh, what he called uh, prayer for, for, for writers, for Christian writers. And I was one of them and he prayed over. Thirdly, I would give a credit to my classmates from the medical school uh, in Velo, especially uh, Susie, she is sitting there, Susie Samuel, and she had been reminding me and encouraging me to write. She herself is an author. She has, she has uh, written a you know, book, I think it is not yet published, a wonderful book. I think it's coming soon. And uh, also apart from Susie, there was uh, Felis Munas, another of my classmates from the States, and uh, my uh, late uh, classmate, Bhaktaraj Chalaya, he was also one of those who was encouraging me to write. And of course, there was Hansa Jayakumar, also in the States. They were the, the peers, I mean, the peer pressure was coming from them for me to write. Then the turning point was, is like, the camel, the straw that broke the camel's back, and that came from Hansa uh, Jai Kumar. She gave me an ultimatum, and she said, "Why do you procrastinate? Start writing." And she gave me a friendly uh, uh, welcome, and he said, "We will write together. You know, she will write one chapter, and I will write another chapter, and we'll go on like that." And. Uh, so I had no other choice. I said, this is it. This is the, what you call the, the Rema time uh, that I have to sit and write. So I did. So I started writing in July, 2017. And I was so fully immersed in the writing that I, re that I could recall stories after stories. And I start writing day and night. And I even started writing when I was at home, when I was at work. And even when I went to send my car for servicing, when I had the free time. And I experienced such a sudden surge of inspiration and motivation that I completed 31 chapters in less than two years. I think that was a bit too to write because I had to recall and recollect many of the things which happened over a span of over 50 years. And uh, many things were brought to my memory. 
as though they had happened just the day before. And I came to recognize that it was the grand author, God Almighty himself, who was inspiring me to write the story because I don't think I would have sat and written stories in that manner. Lastly, I just would like to mention the one person who really prompted me to get everything together, and that is Pastor Lam Ki Hing. He made it possible to get an editor from UK, uh, Liz Tingman, and a printer from Kota Kinabalu, uh, Mrs. Uh, Mary Josephine, and the publisher, Datin Josephine Young. So I got two Josephines and one Liz to get my book um, you know, published. And I, and I thank Pastor Lam for doing all this for me. Finally, my book, Echoes from Borneo, was ready on the 16th of September, 2000, 2000. I don't know whether you recall that date. It was the Malaysia Day. And on that day, my book was ready. And also it was in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic in Sabah. I had to collect my books. So that is a short brief how I started writing my story. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mega. So the lesson learned is it's good to have um, good peer pressure and to have prodders in your life, but ultimately it is God who has led you to do that. Um, keep the everyone who has been writing in the chat group, keep going because we will record all this so that our authors um, can read it later. These are wonderful memories for them. Many of your old classmates uh, have been typing in the chat group as well. And Dr. Andrew, could you also share with us what prompted you to write your book? Yeah, oh my, I have a very encouraging daughter-in-law. Her name is Tina. She lives in Melbourne. She has been prodding me to write my story. Yeah? She is... Um, she, she her hero worshipped me. She, she really liked me. Uh, we get along very well. So for five years, I've been prodding me. And, and then the other thing, of course, was the near-death experience. Huh? In 1999, I, I almost died. Huh? So I don't want to leave this world without telling my story. Huh? to my family members. So I, I wrote, I, there was a very good motivation. I, and then of course, uh, the Holy Spirit prodding me again, the prodding me. And there were times when I was writing, and the Holy Spirit was writing my hand, moving my hand. It, it, it's like Peter was telling, you know, man, Man, right by the Holy Spirit was actually actually writing. Huh? The Holy Holy Spirit move lah, move people to write. So I believe that is what happened. Uh, of course, um, also is a uh, for personal testimony lah. It, it's um, it, it's it's written for personal testimony, Christian testimony, huh? and for personal enrichment, personal enrichment. Uh, I find it is a, find a very enriching experience. Um, it 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 didn't took me quite difficult. No? It was easier than I expected. Thank God, I, it was quite easy. And I don't know why. I always thought it was hard. I think that's it. No? That's all. That's my answer. Thank you, Dr. Andrew. Yeah, praise God, you also have a prodder in your life, your daughter-in-law. And yes, oftentimes it's out of crisis that um, something birthed forth to give us that push to tell our story. So thank you for both of you for doing that to your book. Um, before I ask you to share one highlight story from your book, can I just jump to the question, what is your message to the next generation 
that you want to convey? Um, Dr. Mega first. Um, these are some of the wisdoms that I learned in my working uh, time. Firstly, I learned that medical profession is a vocation, it's a calling, apart from being a career. It should not become a business. And I think I, I'm, I'm saying this with a, a real sort of a uh, feeling that uh, nowadays I think we tend to go along becoming too much of a business enterprise. It is motivated. The medical profession it should be motivated by compassion and caring. It should be more of patient or client interest coming first. We should put the patient first interest before the others. And uh, fourthly, to step out of the comfort zone. We all like to sort of sit in our own place and we hardly think about what's happening around us. Here in this respect, I would like to pay tribute to the doctors and nurses and others who had stepped beyond the comfort zone, as we see today, to save lives in the ongoing COVID pandemic. It looks like a pandemic is needed for us to get out of the comfort zone. And I'm, I'm truly grateful to the many who have sacrificed their lives and they are sacrificing their lives every day now, especially in some countries like in India and in other places. Now, I think we must be ready to go where the need is greatest. Like for example, going into areas where their services is needed, like in the rural and semi-rural areas. Many of us tend to stick in the town areas where we don't sort of uh, need, I mean, we don't see much of that need. The other thing is we must have, must be motivated to think out of the box. That means we must also follow the spirit of the law rather than the letter of the law. I think this is a, a way I think we need to interpret the law very humanely because we must know that we are dealing with human beings. Then the other thing is to safeguard integrity in our work, honesty, and the other is mutual respect for one another. We must learn to respect one another, whoever they are, those who are below us or those who are above us. And lastly, I would say, always remember the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. And I think if we have that in our heart, then nothing will go wrong. That's it. Yeah, thank, thank you, you very for much. those yeah, wonderful gems of wisdom, Dr. Mega. I really like how you say to step out of your comfort zone and you have really exemplified that and to give credit to all the frontliners who have um, really laid down their lives um, yeah, to do what they're doing now. Um, Dr. Andrew, how about for yourself? What is your message to the next generation? Number one, your story is priceless. Your story for the next generation is priceless. Huh? Your story will live on longer than you. Number two, write your story. Do not procrastinate. Leave a legacy for your loved ones. And number three, be, believe in God. God is real. God is there. The hand of providence is always there. From the time you are born until the time you die, God, God will be with you. God says, I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. God love. God love you. That's all. That's all. 
Thank you very much for those words of wisdom, uh, Dr. Andrew, very precious. And to remind each of us here, you know, that our story is priceless. Um, now I want to ask you to share one highlight story from your book. There are so many, but one which was meaningful to you. But before you do that, I want to read from the book, um, one that I really liked um, from Dr. Mega's book on page 32. Up to that time, I had never handled a trauma of that magnitude. That evening, with fear and trembling, I sought divine wisdom to carry out the marathon feat. It took me more than three hours to fix the fractures with screws and plates, repair the shredded muscles and tendons, arrest the bleeding vessels, and finally do skin grafting. I was fatigued, but relieved to see the limb alive. Then two paragraphs later, Six months later, the young man came to the hospital in his best attire with a pretty damsel by his side. Doctor, this is my fiance. Today is our engagement and you are invited to the party. And Dr. Mega says here, I learned a valuable lesson that day to listen to the heartbeat of the patient. I thought his withered limb was a liability, an obstacle, but to the young man, it was an asset a batch of self-esteem and pride. I was concerned with his well-being, but he was, con he was focused on the fullness of his life. So to me, that was a very meaningful story, Dr. Mega. Um, please share with us your highlight of one story from your book. Um, in my book, there are 31 chapters. So if you read one chapter a day, you can cover it in a month. I'm picking on one story, uh, which is chapter 11, which is found on page 50. Um, it's about um, an incident that happened, which where I nearly, I mean, we nearly lost our lives. This is how the story goes. How on earth did we get into this mess? mourned our new pilot, Captain Ahmad Redwan, an ex-Royal Air Force helicopter pilot. I looked around and saw treetops and a mountain cliff in front of us. Just above us, spread like a blanket, was a misty fog covering the valley. It was a beautiful sight flying over the rapids, which stretched over five miles. The foamy spray from the water below cast multiple rainbows. The express boat going to Blaga was just below us, battling the cascade of rapidly flowing water. We saw the passengers holding on to the railing and, frantic and frantically waving to us as we overtook and disappeared over the ridge. I remembered an incident a few months earlier, a similar type of express boat crashed into a rock at the same spot and a dozen passengers were thrown overboard. One unfortunate Australian female tourist was drowned. Her body was retrieved from the water when the rescuers found a leg tied to a long rope. Apparently, she was filming the rapid from the deck with her leg secured to a rope. I had to perform the autopsy on her. Captain, we are doomed, sighed the nurse seated behind. I tried to look ahead, but could see the outline of the cliff about 50 meters away. The pilot tried to navigate the aircraft slowly, but painfully. But there seemed to be no way to escape. That's it, I thought. With a blink, within a blink of an eye, we were doomed to crash. I glanced at the pilot. He was sweating and trembling. He had taken out his prayer beads and started reciting the Quranic verses. When I saw the pilot losing hope, fear set in 
and I cried out in my mind, Lord, is this the last one minute of our lives? Just then I thought, I heard a voice within me saying, you are not going to die. I opened my eyes as though from a stupor and to my utter joy, saw a small waterfall leading to a small stream. Captain Raduan, steady yourself. I alerted the confused pilot. Look below us is a small stream. Follow that waterway. The pilot, without hesitation, pulled the throttle to a full 180 degrees turn that swirled us out of the seat. I saw the rock face disappear behind us, but a few more feet might have damaged the tail rotor. The stream below meandered through the canopy of vegetation, but its presence was not missed by the reflection of the sun on it. Captain Rudwan glued his eyes with a, like a hawk on the stream. Ultimately, we found the way out to the main Rejang River. By then, the mist had cleared and the bright sunlight awaited us all the way to our destination. Captain Radwan was quick to express his gratitude. Allahu Akbar, Allah has saved us. There was much rejoicing on board. The deep silence of the last 10 minutes vanished. The feeling of being alive dominated once again. The account did not end there. Captain Raduan, on his return to Kuala Lumpur, married his childhood sweetheart. A year later, while working for a timber company in Sabah, he met with a tragic accident and passed away. It seemed he tried to land the helicopter on the floating logs, slipped the footing and crashed into the Kinabatangan River and was drowned. It was a very sad news to us who had known him during that deadly encounter in the mountains. The last one minute, however, did not belong to any one of us, but to God. That's the end of the story. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mega. The way you write, we can almost visualize the whole scenario as if we're in it. Thank you. Um, Dr. Andrew, um, in page 122, when you shared how God rescued you from the spinal shock and spastic, I don't know if I can um, pronounce this properly, tetraplegia, and how you fell with your head face downwards, and but yet so full of gratitude. So you wrote here, I thank God for preserving my life so that I can continue to serve him. God is good. His love, compassion, mercy, and grace were lavished on me. God's eyes were on me throughout my ordeal. I experienced such amazing grace. Once I could not walk, but now I can walk. I hope this testimony will be an encouragement for you as it has been and continues to be for me. So, Dr. Andrew, please share with us a highlight story for you from for you from your book. Um, your mic, Dr. Andrew. Yeah, I would like to share with you uh, on page one one six. Uh, page one one six, Bobby. I nice is entitled Bobby. A dog is indeed a man's best friend. And I had a dog in Ipo too. He was an Alsatian mongrel mixed breed. I call him Bobby, the same name as my other dog in Tanjung Malin. I got him when he was only a puppy. One day a cobra entered into my compound, into the compound of my house. Bob, Bobby was very brave. He saved the day. He barked and he guarded the compound and prevented the cobra from entering into our house. I quickly called the fire rescue squad for assistance. They sent a team over to my house and safely removed 
the Book Cobra. I was forever grateful to Bobby for, for his act of selfless courage. After about nine years, Bobby became very old and frail. One day when it was raining heavily, I opened the gate and Bobby rushed out of the house. I could not get him back into the house because of the heavy rain. I thought he would come back later, but he did not. Every day, my wife and myself would comb the neighborhood with our car to look for Bobby, but he was nowhere to be found. Three days later, we spotted him lying down in a field, looking weak and frail. I took him into our, my car, brought him home, and looked after him. However, Bobby passed away peacefully after several days. I buried him in the compound of my house, and I was very sad. But thank God I found him and I had closure over the incident. Otherwise, I would still be feeling very guilty. So that's a highlight. There, there are many highlights, but I thought I would okay. share that one. Thank you, Dr. Andrew. This Bobby must have meant a lot to you for you to share yeah. this. In yeah, book. really, really meant a lot to me. Um, okay, while I go to the last question, um, can I invite those of you who have questions, please do post it in the chat now. <clears throat> um, I saw one come in already, and Pastor Lam will be um, picking some of the questions to ask afterwards. And yeah, thank you for all the messages that are coming in to say where you knew our two doctors from in the past. Um, the last um, question I want to ask would be... Um, for Dr. Andrew first, because I, I remember that, yeah, this part, I also learned something in your previous book talk. What would you have changed if you could live your life over again? Well, I, I would like to spend more time with my family members, huh? especially my wife and my children. I will work less hours. I will not go on call. I will not. I just. I will just work office hour. No more on call, and I can spend more time with my family, because I have been working. A dog's life, you know. You know, from three a.m. to seven a.m., you. I'm rescuing people, you know, from three a.m. to seven a.m. And what happened? Uh, next day. 9 a.m. I have to work again. My children, when they grew up, I was not around with them. So when now that my children are big, I don't have a very close bonding. I don't have a very close bonding. Uh, that, that one I regret. That one I regret because of, all because of my work. Because of a dog's life. So I would do that differently. Maybe I don't want to be a doctor also to do something. Like that. But I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, short answer for you, Dr. Yeah. Thank you very much, um, Dr. Andrew, for your very transparent and honest answer. I believe many people have been blessed with your service as a doctor, but it's a very um, powerful reminder for all of us to really prioritize our families because <clears throat> we never know how long we have um, and it's our loved ones which count at the end of the day. Thank you for that sharing. Um, Dr. Mega, can I ask you, what is your message to people considering writing a book? So please keep the questions um, coming, everybody, in the chat group. Well, I would sort of um, tell others, to believe that everyone has a story to tell, however small or great. And that story will certainly impact some, leave a legacy behind.
you must sort of keep journal and document interesting happenings along the way. Because I think uh, it's not easy to <coughs> recall sometimes some details. And uh, it is good to jot down interesting events in life. Begin early in life to write and begin to tell stories. Tell stories to anyone that you meet. Tell stories on the internet. Tell stories on the on the WhatsApp. Pray for divine inspiration. We have to ask God to give us the wisdom and give us inspiration. Because I found that it's not very easy to write. It's not easy at all. Sometimes you sit with a paper and there's nothing comes out. It's just a blank paper. But I tell you, when God gives inspiration, it just flows. I just don't know. We don't know when to stop. So we have to pray for the divine inspiration. And also we have to make reading and writing a hobby. That's where we can sort of improve knowledge how to write. And that could develop into a career. Also when we have more free time that we can start writing. And also it will keep our mind alert that when we grow old, we don't get into senility or Alzheimer's. So it's a good thing to read and write and to memorize memorize poems and memorize scripture verses. Now, my own uh, personal experience, as I started, I was a procrastinator. I needed a lot of prodding people to push me to write. But my writing uh, experience started way back many years ago when my st wife started to uh, show interest in writing. And she was getting some correspondence uh, courses from the London School of Writing. And she would sort of consult me and ask me for certain ideas, how to put it in writing. And I used to help her. I've written quite a few of those uh, short stories. And I found that I had a knack and a talent for writing from that time. And later on, when we had the, the class email thread, which was uh, introduced by Susie and others. So I used to write on and off some sh short accounts, short stories. And uh, some of the uh, comments from uh, those who read encouraged me to write also. And uh, not too long ago, I decided to write the biography of my father-in-law, a very interesting person. And uh, it's an incomplete story. I haven't completed it. So it is a thing that's going on. And uh, uh, in, in 2018 and 19, I had the privilege of writing, a co-authoring uh, co a biography of the late Dr. Ranjit Matthew, one of my very good friends. And that book was published uh, and also it's on Amazon. Current book, Echoes from Borneo, came out just recently. Currently also, I'm writing a second follow-up book on the Echoes from Borneo. It is incomplete due to the COVID pandemic. I hope more doctors like us, like me and Dr. Andrew, will put down in writing our experiences. They will be very helpful for the future generation, a legacy to leave behind. And, to, and, uh, and it's a sort of a thing that I think we should all consider. Don't underestimate yourself. Like I was underestimating myself until I sat down to write. And uh, well, I think it is just that we have to sit down and write. You can ask Susie, my classmate. She's a good writer. I appreciate her writing, beautiful. And uh, um, I just want to sort of mention here in closing, uh, one doctor from Miri, uh, his name is Dr. Faisal Mansour. He has written a very interesting account uh, of a community doctor in Miri, a span of 1983 to 2014. A very interesting account of his life, how he served the communities in Miri. It's a very good book to recommend for young writers. So I think there are a lot of books like that coming out that should encourage us enough to keep writing, right? To keep people informed of what's going on 
like what I wrote about things that happened in Sarawak many, many years ago. Some of the customs are probably there are no more there. And now things have changed. But at least I think these are things that people will remember to improve their livelihood and perhaps to have a better outlook on life. Thank you very much. That's what Thank I you. shared. Thank you, Dr. Mega. Those are very practical um, tips to help um, those who are considering writing a book. Um, before I call Pastor Lam to um, take the Q&A session, someone asked in the chat whether the books are available on Amazon Kindle. Um, Dr. Andrew, is yours available yet on Amazon Kindle? Yes, yes, it's available. Okay. It's on available. It's, okay. it's, it's available. Anyone, if you send me an email, I can give you the link. Mm, yeah. Later, we will or flash... the Kindle and the paperback also. Later, we'll flash the contacts again. Uh, yeah. Dr. Mega, is yours available on Amazon Kindle yet? I don't uh, think so. It, yes, <laughs> mine is also available. Uh, okay, it's great. available in Australia. It's available in Australia, UK and USA. Okay, I have great. put it up yeah, on the places, yes. So later, yeah, I'm interested, I can give the link. Okay, so later we'll flash your emails again so people can follow up. Um, and um, just now, Dr. Timothy Sung, he was here and he um, was the founder of that group I told you about with um, comprising songwriters, artists and authors. So um, let us know if you would like us to connect uh, to that group as well. Okay, so I will pass the time on to... Um, Pastor Lam, for about five, 10 minutes of question and answers. We can keep our answers um, crisp. Okay. Uh, Pastor Lam, over to you. Okay, yeah. hey, so far there's only one question, many comments. Um, and the question is from our guest of honor. <laughs> and he asks this question It is said we learn more from our mistakes than from our successes. But will fear of litigation deter us from writing about our mistakes? What do you think? So we start with Dr. Mega. Would you like to answer that question? That's a very thought-provoking question. Uh, Dr. Mega, could you unmute again, please? Yes. Uh, well, I think we have to be, uh, what do you call, uh, very careful in that uh, area. Um, we have to be very uh, harmless as a dove, wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. And I think there are quite a lot of uh, issues that I also mentioned in my book, which I thought are quite thought-provoking when I wrote about the penance and I wrote about the, uh, what do you call, uh, um, the... Uh, destruction of the forest and so on. I didn't mention about those in my book. But these are all real things that everybody knows. So I think uh, um, uh, unless we sort of uh, read on policy matters which uh, affect the, the government or the state, I think uh, we, we should not be afraid because we are telling the truth. But say it very diplomatically, say it very carefully. That's all I'll say. Thank you. Thank you for your, Thank you for your uh, answer. Now, there's, uh, there's another question that has come in um, directed at Dr. Mega. Sorry, uh, Dr. Andrew, just uh, the next question I'll direct to you. But this is um, a direct message to Dr. Mega. Uh, is there one thing you would like to pick out from your book? that gives you the most touching, never forgetting moment that you can ever forget. Directed at Dr. Mega. Uh, unmute, unmute. Yeah. There are so many uh, um, experiences uh, um, but I think one, one uh, thing that uh, it sort of, uh, uh, it touches my heart is the incident which I went through with my son. That is the, uh, the, the emergency that he had in the States. Uh, that really sort of touched my heart. And uh, 
and I saw God really working through in that uh, miracle. I still remember, even though it happened about 20 years ago, it is still fresh in my mind. Okay. Yes. Um, yes. There's no other question, no other. but I just for you highlight one or two comments uh, that have come in. Uh, one especially for one Dr. Special. Andrew uh, from um, Jenny uh, Saw from Miri. And she says this, uh, I, I'm greatly inspired by Dr. Andrew. Hope you can share with our SIB church group about your Christian motivation to enhance our faith. And so I really do hope that out of this book launch, there will be connections and a dose of opportunity to share some of these very inspiring testimonies to different church groups and uh, different church uh, 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 and churches. Uh, there, there are so many very um, encouraging comments that have come in, and um, um, let's let's pick one for Dr. Mega. Uh, Mr. Lam, a new question just came in. Oh, just came in. Okay. Maybe All both right. doctors oh. can reply. Okay. Now, 